Welcome back to What's New with Mead. We're in episode number 36, and I have Hodge from Hanging with Hodge here today to chat about mead making and his YouTube channel and everything else. So, Hodge, glad you're here. Thanks for joining me. Thank you for having me, Garrett. I really appreciate it. I have been now, looking forward to this since you invited me to come on. I've been like really excited about it. So, man, well, Excellent. I'm glad to have you here. This is a, this is going to be a blast. Um, first of all, I don't normally do the what you're drinking thing, but I'm very curious. What are you drinking tonight? So, on this side, I have strawberry lemonade meat. Okay. Yeah. On this side, I have strawberry lemonade wine. Ooh, a little side by side, little AB kind of test. Were they in it is. tandem or? It is. Yep. So I made them in tandem. I put a video out there on it. Um, you know, I see a lot of videos out there for you know making mead and stuff. And I was like, you know what? I like mead. I like wine. I'm gonna try both. I've never made wine before. So I just um, said I'm gonna do. And I saw a video from, uh, from over on Baywood Mead. Uh, on her channel, where she made strawberry lemonade. And I made a comment in there, uh, I make it different, I cheat. Uh, and she's like, how do you cheat? I was like, well, you really can't cheat when you're making mead. Um, one of the things I always tell people is, I make mead my way, you make mead your way. Uh, I was like, okay, so I'm gonna, make a, I'm gonna make a mead video to show how I make strawberry lemonade mead. And I thought, you know what? I'm gonna make it a little bit different. And I'm gonna do a comparison, a side-by-side -side comparison. Uh, and I've seen you do some experiments and I love the way that you do the experiments as well. I'm like, I'm gonna do that uh, in a similar way. And thankfully, I also have a uh, wife who's a research scientist. Uh, so she helps me out with actually following scientific protocols and stuff like that. Uh, so I ended up doing one of um, strawberry lemonade mead and one of strawberry lemonade wine. And so how did you, how'd you do the lemonade side? What was your, what your so process there? Both of them. Where's my book? Ah, I left my book upstairs. My notebook. Um, so with both of them, I did them the – I started off the exact same way, same base. Uh -huh. So I used um, – I just went out I got strawberry lemonade uh, from Costco, gallon of each of it. Um, and I started that off in the bucket. And then I brought – I used – in the mead, I used honey. And in the um, wine, I used sugar. And I brought them both up to – it was 1.130 as a starting gravity for both of them. So this way here, they're both the same. I use the same uh, yeast in each one, capped them at the same time, put them in the same location so that the temperatures were the same, um, racked them both at the same time. Uh, so I kept everything as equal as possible and I went to secondary. So I haven't actually bottled it yet. This was actually a uh, just checking to make sure that it's good. And, <laughs> yeah, you got to do that every once in a while. For and sure. it is. It is. It's really good. Um, and it was an interesting find. The mead has actually finished sooner than the wine has. Uh, the mead finished off at 1.030. And the wine uh, right now uh, is at a 1.046. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So they went at different rates. Um, and the, uh, the way I usually determine that it's pretty much done is taking multiple readings. And when the reading's not changing over a couple of weeks, it's not going anywhere. Right. Right. Uh, and then I'll put in my state lives and stuff. Uh, so this one here, it's been uh, at 1.030 for a month. So I know that the meat is done. Uh, but a month ago when I took the reading on this one here, it was at 1.050 and now it's down to 1.046. Uh, and yeah. so, you know, I've got a, this one here will stay a little bit longer. Uh, this one is a little bit sweeter and you can get right. more of the strawberry flavor out of the wine than you do with the meat. Interesting. But so I, like I know that like, yeah, well, you know, I haven't done a lot of, um, well, I say I haven't done a lot. I've done a couple tests, starting to do more tests with like uh, wine bases versus mead. So on that note, I have a, um, a pie mint that I've been doing. And then I also in tandem started the wine version of it. I basically just split a wine kit and did one okay. gallon or excuse me, three gallons worth of wine, three gallons worth of, of a pie mint. And, um, 
it is interesting to note what honey does in that case. Of course, it brings its floral variety and those things. But it's uh, comparative to like beer. I don't know if you've made a braggot before. But nope. so uh, um, if anyone listening doesn't know, a braggot is a beer mead combination. So it is a very interesting style in general, but it's a lot of fun to make. It also changes a lot of the beery character you get. It dries out a beer. Honey generally dries out a beer in a way that's kind of funky. I kind of wonder with that recipe if, like you said, it, uh, you said the the mead version went drier, right? Yes. Yep. Exactly. So I I wonder if that, for that reason or if that um, if honey dries out a wine. Um, more so than a mead. I haven't done any testing on that, but that's an interesting thing. What was your starting gravity on those, by the way? I believe it was 1.130. Oh, okay, great. And you, yep. do you know what yeast you used? Yeah, I use, uh, most of the time I use uh, one point, uh, yeah, one point. Most of the time I use the EC1118, Lavin. Uh, interesting. I'm, I'm and, a little shocked that it stopped so early. Uh, 1130, yeah. it should have been able to burn through it all, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, and I was kind of shocked at it as well. Now, again, as I haven't bottled it yet either, um, I'll let it age in the uh, in the carboy even longer. Um, you know, and I'll, I'll still take another reading. Uh, and it could be, so though I'm using, they call it organic. Uh, they say it's organic strawberry lemonade. Uh, when you look at the ingredients, so um, there are some uh, chemicals in there. Um, so I'm wondering if that plays an effect in it and how it impacts it uh, versus using regular water and strawberries and lemons. Uh, I'm using something that has some other stuff besides that in it. Um, uh, so, but I'm not a hundred percent sure I need to yeah. maybe use it, just do it uh, with real strawberries, real lemons and, uh, and do it that way there. Yeah. A lot of strawberry versus- is, strawberry is tough to use. It's one of those that, um, can be a funky flavor to get it kind yes. of it, it can uh, ferment weird it, it tends to add some oddness to me which is a new challenge to say the least yeah the first mead that i made with strawberries in it um and i used whole strawberries um uh-huh. just cut them up and tossed them in um gave it just a little bit of a strawberry flavor not a whole lot it, it was definitely it was a straight it was a mead with a little bit of strawberry flavor in it um, but I was putting, I always put it in the primary. I haven't done a secondary one yet. I'm kind of lazy like that. Uh, most, most of the means that I make, I try to make it, especially when I'm making video about it. I try to make it so that it's as easy as possible that if somebody wants to try and reproduce it, um, they can get the ingredients easy enough. Um, and that it would be able to, um, there wouldn't be a whole lot of steps for people to do, especially beginners. You know, I I really view myself as, you know, I've only been doing it three to four years. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. So I still see myself as as a beginner. I'm still learning. Uh, I'm still out there. I'm watching the different videos and stuff learning. Uh, When I started early on, uh, I watched some videos that probably I should have passed on, Uh, picked up a couple bad habits. And I got into some videos that had better habits and switched out the habits. Yeah, uh, those. yeah. Well, so let's get into that. Let's talk about your channel. So um, tell us the name of your channel. Tell us kind of about yourself. When did you start the channel? All those things. Yeah, so um, my channel is Hanging with Hodge. Um, and the really the purpose of the channel uh, started off different. I wasn't actually doing a mead channel at first. Uh, and actually, this is my second channel that I started. My first channel is... Uh, Hodge the Hungry Hunter. Uh, oh, okay. So I'm, I'm a hunter. And uh, the uh, uh, I was doing videos on how to cook wild game. And so I've got uh, several out there. And then I took a break from that and decided I wanted to change it up a bit and do something more uh, uh, around the community. And so uh, I was thinking about how I'm going to do this. And then I started the idea of, you know what, I'm going to start doing videos of just where I go and things that I do. Uh, I did one where I went to India. Fascinating. I got to go over to India uh, for several weeks uh, on work. And so I did a video on that. And then 
uh, I did a video on uh, a local restaurant uh, here in Kalamazoo. And I want to start doing, focusing on things that are here in Kalamazoo and start promoting Kalamazoo as a whole. Uh, just thinking, hey, that'd be fun to do. And after the, that video, as I was getting ready to do the next one, um, the world went to hell in a handbasket really fast. Yeah. <laughs> and so now I'm stuck at home. And I'm like, what am I going to do? I started this channel and it was just all right. about hanging out with people. Uh -huh. now, that, that's really what I want to do. I just want to hang out with people, uh, have a good time, uh, see, see friends, make new friends. Um, and that's really what the channel is about is just making new friends out there. I love it when people comment uh, on the videos. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm not even looking for comments to the effect that, you know, uh, hey, what ingredients should I use next? Uh -huh. You know, and that, that's, a, that's interesting as well. Um, but I don't know if, it, you know, some of the ones I put out, I put trivia questions out there. It, you know, drop a hint if you know what it is. And I assign random points that mean nothing uh, yeah. to it. And it's just fun. And so, but it went into, as I said, going from, I was going to go like different restaurants and parks and things like this here uh, and different businesses and stuff to, well, Hey, I'm going to make me cause I've gotten into me making meat about a year and a half, two years before that. Uh -huh. um, I'd always been fascinated with meat. I always liked meat. Um, I've never been a beer person, so I've never even thought about making beer, right. but it was uh, mead and wine and mead. And I got into mead. Uh, you can probably see it with the gray and the, here, I'm kind of yeah. an old guy. Um, I used to watch the old Robin Hood uh, movies. And, you know, in those movies, you know, they'd be sitting around the campfire and stuff like that, drinking mead and, you know, the Viking, all the Viking movies and stuff. They're sitting around uh, going out pillaging villages and then drinking mead uh, yeah. in the mead halls and stuff. And uh, I actually did a video on uh, Thorin's Mead Hall from mm. uh, Lord of the Rings. Uh which was an apple pear mead. Uh, but I thought, you know, my, oh, well, my sister, my sister actually said, hey, have you tried making mead? Because she was making mead. Uh -huh. And so she gave me some of hers. I said, yeah. So then I, I looked up on YouTube and I said, how do you make mead? Hey, I can do that. If yeah. he can do it, I can do it. You know, and that's what, one of the things with my channel I want as well. I want people to go, look, if that idiot there can make mead, anybody can make it. <laughs> And it's true. If I can do it, anybody can do it. So uh, then I started, you know, just your basic meat, honey, water, yeast, uh, and going down that route there. And I started catching some of these other channels that were making these different types of meats, uh -huh. uh, uh, these fruit meats that are out there. You know, they're adding fruit to it. Oh, hey, I hadn't thought about that. Why don't I give that a try too? Uh -huh. uh, and then I said, you know, just realized, hey, you know what? If they can do it, I can do it. Um, and I like the tech side of things. Uh, I'm in, I'm in it. So, uh, I've been in it for, um, about 30 years, <laughs> 30 years. <laughs> uh, and, uh, so I like the tech side of things and, um, getting into the software and doing the video editing and stuff like that. And so I thought, Hey, I, I can do this and decided I was going to do videos on making me next. And that's kind of how it's evolved, um, was through a pandemic um, mm -hmm. making meat videos, uh, yeah. and, you know, try and break up the monotony for some folks at home. Right. Uh, yeah. You know, and do it, doing it that way. Man. So, I mean, I, I think that's, that's awesome. Um, I love that your channels, um, uh, to, for lack of better term, just a really, uh, relaxing kind of chill place to talk, to hang out. And I think that you're, you're building, a community in itself, you know, our meat community is pretty small, pretty small as it is, but you're able to even more so kind of create a community for people who uh, feel even more comfortable. Cause like you said, YouTube videos can be uh, a little bit uh, exhausting as a commenter. When you get on there and you see the thousands of comments on something, it can also be daunting to ask questions that are awkward. So, I think that your, your openness to answer questions and willingness to just kind of be there and help is super important for everybody. Um, and, and that's a huge thing I want to push for anyone listening is to check out Hodge, not just because he's making good mead, but because he's got a channel that is just user friendly, just a great community. So for everybody listening, go, go check him out. I mean, we're going to dive deeper now. I, I want to kind of get to know you more. So 
let's start talking about mead, your meads in general that you've made. So do you have a favorite mead that you've made to this point? Is there something that's like your yeah. flagship? Yeah, yeah, there is. And the way that I found it, I'm going to back up just a little bit here. When we were on a cruise, when my wife and I were on a cruise, we left the kids behind and went on a Disney cruise without them. It was great. It's awesome. And uh, can't do that often, but we did get away. When we go on cruises, we like to go and we turn it into a learning experience. And one of the things we did was we went on a, um, a wine tasting. We learned, learned about how to do a wine tasting and stuff. And the sommelier on board said there, there are actually three types of meat. There are only three or three types of wine, and I kind of take that over to meat as well. Um, there's good, there's better, and there's best. Do you know the difference between the three? Yeah. What is the difference? Okay, so the, the difference is good is a wine or meat that you like, uh, but you may not be able to afford it. Uh, a better wine is a wine or meat that you like and that you can't afford the best wine or mead is the one that you like and that somebody else is paying for. Ah, so, <laughs> that's great. I had to take that kind of philosophy uh, when I picked out the types of meads that I like. And uh, it kind of goes with uh, actually throw it away, uh, never make it again. Uh, it's a one gallon batch, uh, which, you know, I might make another gallon of it at some point to this is good. I'm making five gallon batches of this. And so the ones, there are a couple that I make five gallon batches of. Uh, the first one being mango mead. Uh, love mango mead. That is, is one of the tops that are up there. Um, and then tied with that, uh, and mango mead, it's really, again, I, I try to keep things really simple. Uh, mango nectar uh, from Costco, mm -hmm. five gallons of it into a bucket. Um, honey to bring it up to about, again, about a 1.140 uh, gravity reading uh, and EC111, oh, EC1118 uh, yeast. Let it go. Uh, and it comes out really good. And then the other one is apple pie mead, uh, which is, I got another video out there on that one there. Uh, and the apple pie mead being uh, real simple. I get, uh, five gallons of 100% uh, apple juice from Costco, the, uh, not from concentrate as well. And that's the other thing I like about it. There's 100% apple juice, not from concentrate. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. Nothing added. Uh, and then uh, for each gallon, so you can make this in one gallon batch up to five gallon batch or beyond. Uh, for each gallon, you put in uh, one stick of cinnamon and one clove. Boom. And then add your honey to bring it up to, uh, again, about a 1.1. 401.150 um, and let it go. And it's mm. really, really good. Simple to make. Um, anyone can do it. Uh, yeah. And those are the easiest ones. Now, with the mango one, we were out with some friends um, about a month ago. We went down to Hawking Hills State Park in uh, Ohio. Mm -hmm. If anybody ever gets a chance, look, go Google Hawking Hills. Uh, in Ohio, the caves there are incredible. Uh, and we did an Airbnb, uh, stayed at a great place uh, down there, uh, rented a house with some friends. And, uh, or, you know, I bring along my mead. Hey, look, I got mead. I got, you know, and like mead. We knew it. We heard that you were making mead. You know, how does it taste? Uh -huh. So, you know, they're like, oh, wow, this is really good. They brought, and I made a video about it and I messed it up. Uh, because I grabbed the wrong, I said the wrong thing. I grabbed the wrong thing, uh, but it still turned out good. Uh, I'm going to remake it though. Uh, I said uh, pineapple rum, and it still turned out. We mixed, uh, but it was actually coconut rum, oh, uh, yeah. coconut rum, and the mango mead, and Ooh. that's going to be very, very dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so then I turn around. And I, I uh, so I'm going to make this as straight mead. Uh, and so, and I, again, as I got back to the house and I remembered it wrong, I thought it was pineapple. So I used pineapple juice and mango nectar instead of getting coconut. Uh, so I'm going to get it. I'm going to make it with coconut in there as well instead. Yeah. Um, but when I made it like this, uh, the video is called dango mango mead because then if you read, do the lettuce, it's dang, oh man, go mead. Uh, <laughs> that's so good. And, uh, it's, it's good. Uh, I really like it. I'm going to try it with the coconut. 
Uh, that's that's super that. interesting. You mentioned those two because uh, my friends are, I, I made a mango meat a while back. Now I kind of went a different way. I did not use juice. I made a traditional and mm -hmm. um, then I added the Amaretti flavoring. And what was most frustrating about that was my friends loved it. They loved this mead that was just un so easy to make. It was obnoxiously easy to make. And so then that prompted me, okay, well now they want a mango mead. Let's see if I can do it better. So I went and bought, you know that the, um, it's, it's wine based, but it's called Vintners. You can get it at brew shops. It's like a white jug and it yeah, comes in like yeah. a one gallon. Generally they have all flavors. You know, you can get blackberry, uh, blueberry, all those things. Yeah. Yep. I went ahead and just bought because we're, I needed it for two reasons. I wanted to make this mango mead, but also we have our, our great mead project we're working on. Um, I wanted to, to try to make something that was using real mango, which I'm pretty sure that juice, that, that wine base is real mango from what I understand. So I just basically dumped that into a five gallon carboy and then put some honey in and did that stuff. And it is fantastic. It makes me still want to experiment with other mango options because obviously not everybody can get to those things. But uh, I, I I also love the mango mead. I think it um, is very good. And I really would love to try, I want to try your recipe at some point because I'm curious now. I'm, I kind of got a mango mead um, curiosity of yeah. brewing, so to speak. But yeah, now, Go ahead. I was about to say, the, the catch with the way that I do it, because I'm using uh, mango nectar, as the base um, is you get a lot of leaves or sediment at the bottom. Right. Um, you do. So if you're making a five gallon batch, you're going to end up with three and a half, four gallons. Mm -hmm. uh, right. And you're going to rack it several times. Uh, that's okay though. But as long as people know, that's I mean, that's right. nothing in the world. Right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah. It's, it is so good. And the, the other thing that the other characteristic behind it, being the way that I determine meats is if my wife will drink it. <laughs> if my wife yeah. says, if my wife goes, honey, you need to make five gallons of this. Yeah. I know I got to no, win. I, uh, it's funny you say that because I'm getting to the same point. Um, every time my wife likes something, I'm like, oh, okay. Like she, she'll tolerate. I'm sure your wife does too. She's like, yeah. she'll drink stuff and be like, that's, a, that's pretty good. And you've probably been able to figure out over time. Yeah. Like if she's like, likes it, doesn't like it or hates it and you know what kind of keywords. So I'm getting to that point too. There's some things I'm like, okay, I know she liked that one. So I need to make more of that. But I um, also want to talk about the apple pie mead yeah. you mentioned, because that's another one of those that I, um, uh, I really want to get good at. And my, I have an apple pie boche recipe specifically that I think is pretty fantastic. I this, I think you should try it only because um, it, it's a little more effort, but it uses some weird things. It uses graham crackers as part of the actual mead. Um, it, and I use it in like a, kind of like a dry hopping way. So once that primary and secondary go through, you throw those graham crackers in and it provides some breadiness, some more spice side nope. even though my recipe has a ton of spices already in it so that meat itself is, is pretty interesting and i would recommend uh, anybody to try it um, of course i wouldn't recommend yours but my brain being the crazy weird obsessed with a b tests i would love to like try your recipe now and try mine and try somebody else's and just kind of like try everybody's recipe because i think it'd be so fun to to see what the differences are between each recipe so yeah that, that would be a lot of fun to do, but apple, apple kind of, pie meads are good. That's kind of how I got started. You know, I looked out there and I saw other people making these different recipes. I'm like, I'm like, I want to try that. See how it comes out. You know, um, some of the stuff people put out there, you know, I tried making it and uh, uh, I was like, nope, that's not for me. Um, and uh, I, I always love the ones when they go, yeah, so let's try this. Oh, this is wonderful. I love it. <laughs> I'm like, I, I, oh, I'm I got a sure shirt that's like that. that. I, I should have wore that shirt. That's, that's <laughs> my favorite, favorite shirt. Yeah. There's a lot of those. Um, that's, I'm sure you've noticed being on YouTube. There's a lot of, uh, um, well, when you're putting 
so much time and effort into a video, if something were to go wrong, I think a lot of people, instead of maybe dumping something or whatever, they kind of just kind of keep rolling with it. And so then yeah. if you're trying a product that's not that great because you kind of have to, to get that video out, sometimes it can be, it's, it's just not the best. And so yeah. Yeah. unfortunately yeah, and that's, that's where we're at. Even though I, I make meat in the videos is I don't want it to be all about meat. You know, I want to be that hanging out. It's that, as you said, building that community uh, going. And, uh, you know, it's that, and you know what, when you're hanging out with friends, Sometimes not everything's the greatest, you know, uh, you, Hey, try this here. Oh, it's not for me. You know, maybe it's for one person. It's not for another. You know? Yeah, um, absolutely. One of them that I made, um, I made a Vikings blood, uh, that I, I, I made the video on it and it was from a recipe that I got off of another YouTube channel and I thought it was okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, my son, who's my son, who's an adult, um, mm -hmm. loved it, and he's like, "Don't worry, Dad. I'll take it off your hands for you." <laughs> but and the, I mean, that's a testament um, to that to that uh, mead itself. Uh, every palate is different, like you're saying. So your son loved it. You weren't a big fan, and I think that's a uh, that that goes both ways. In that, let's say you love a mead and you share it with a friend. If that friend is like and this thing sucks. Don't go, oh my gosh, and be distraught because maybe their palate is just not not loving the pear that you put into that. And that's yeah. that's fine. Really, we should be making mead kind of for ourselves slash little circles around us. Yeah. Um, so. And that's why I say, you know, in, in my videos, I always make it, I try to always make a point. I make mead my way, you make mead your way. You know, because the way that I make it, I'm, I'm making it for my taste. Uh, yeah, you know, and maybe even take what I'm making and make it better. You know, yeah. make make it in something that you real that a per that they really love. You know, it's not quite my recipe, but they tweaked it and they turned it into something that they absolutely love. You know, um, mm -hmm. and I'd love to hear comments like that. You know, hey, I tried your recipe and uh, wasn't quite for me, but I made these changes and it came out great. Yeah, awesome. You know, I. <laughs> That that's a big hot topic thing for me, only because we have standards in our our yes. um, uh, brewing in our mead making community. And when I say standards, of course, I mean like of excellence. But standards of uh, recipes: Joe's Ancient Orange, Braze One Month Mead, uh, Viking Blood, like stuff like that that are are staples, so to speak. I think everybody holds those at some holy value that if you change one ingredient in the Joe's ancient orange mead. You are, you know, cast you to hell because you are just <laughs> like, like it is such a big deal to do anything like that. When in truth, that's a starting point. That's a launching point. Yeah. While those people, uh, you know, I talked to Bray, I had a great uh, podcast episode with him and he's a fascinating guy, super sciencey man. And oh, I, yeah. I believe he, he just scienced the crap out of that, that recipe. I also think even with that, let's say he had trial tested it a thousand times, that doesn't mean that that recipe is going to fit the circle of everybody. So <laughs> you could change a little character that might make it better for you. Um, and I know that's, if Bray, if you're listening, I, I'm not trying, not trying to step on your toes or anybody <laughs> who, who is in that world. But I think the truth is not recipe, not uh, every recipe is not for everybody. So you might just, Try something different with that Joe's, with that Viking blood, and be right. a little happier. So it's launching point into whatever you want to do in the future. Yeah, so. yeah. Yeah, it's like, um, if I pronounce it correctly, um, cascamels? Uh, I think, so I, I think it's capsisumel. I never understood why, but I think it's capsisumel. It's a weird uh, word to it's me. It's actually... I, and as I said, I, I always butcher the name of it, um, yeah. but it's based off of, my understanding is it's based off of, uh, that's the name of a pepper. Uh, uh -huh. yeah. And somebody used that. Pe and so now if you use a uh, spicy pepper in the mead, um, you do it. And like, I love spicy food. I, yeah, you know, I, we grow up in Indian food and I tell them, you know, make it More. like, <laughs> yeah, make, make it spicy, make it like you make it in India. You know, yeah. I've been to India and I know how they make it there. And that's right, the way right, that I right. want. Um, where I work, they have Wednesdays are 
when the office when I was going into the office when it was still open, um, they uh, they would have Wednesday was uh, they would make Indian food on Wednesday. Problem is that they make it for Americans, and so right, it doesn't right. have that spice behind it. Um, so uh, I work with a lot of great uh, folks from India, and you know I tell them, you know well, I've got this great restaurant down here. You got to come try it out, and we'll go to these different restaurants, and they will. They're like, this is what you want to try. Oh, man, it's incredible. And it's hot. And I love that. Uh, you know, give me jalapenos. You know, I'll eat those straight up. But I did a, um, uh, a dragon's breath meat mm. uh, that used, uh, it called for two jalapenos in it. And so, as you know, for me, I, I'd chew up jalapenos, no problem. But it wasn't right in a mead for me. Uh, now, so I've got the- a different. Sorry, was the jalapeno not right? Was that the problem, or was it the overall flavor of it? I think it was the overall. It just overpowered two, two jalapenos in a one-gallon batch. To me, per, just to me personally, um, is it was too much. Of, it was overpowering uh, behind it. Was it? You didn't uh, get those characteristics of the honey and the fruit in there. Uh, was it too vegetal? Because like every time I used a jalapeno, it becomes. Uh, it starts off as heat, but then that heat dissipates a little bit and turns into like bell pepper, like, like a raw jalapeno with seeds turns like bell peppery. Uh, did you ever experience that with that? No, I haven't experienced that, but I haven't done a whole lot with it either because after I said, I put those two in, um, now I've got a different one that I'm doing now that, uh, had, but I only use one, um, and it, um, and it's still going. Uh, but so far initially, I'm like, wow, this, you know, I, I said, I made a one gallon batch of, I always start off with one gallon. That's my trial. Um, uh, that's my experiment. And then I, and I've said it in the, uh, videos, you know, uh, is I did not care when I made the dragon's breath meat. I did not care for it. Even a year later, uh-huh. I didn't like it. Um, and I ended up pitching it. Um, no, nobody that I shared it with liked it. Right. Uh, you know, I'm like, Hey, I don't like it. If you like it, you can have it. You know, think, oh. uh, but nobody liked that one there. So, uh, yeah. I ended up pitching that, but this one here that, that I made, um, and it's only got one jalapeno in it. And I also, the other thing is when I did it the first time I left it in for like 30 days. And this time when I did it, I took it out after, um, 10 days. Okay. So it wasn't in yeah. as long. It gives it that little bit of a kick, but it's not overpowering this time. So I learned a lesson there. Uh, you know, sometimes you don't need to leave things in the full length of your brew time. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I was always just throw it in, leave it in until you go to move it to uh, secondary. It stays in. Don't disturb. <laughs> yeah. And then I was like, no, you know, I did it a little bit different, and I learned a lesson. You know, and that's one of the things I like about doing this is learning. I'm learning new stuff in there. Yeah, you. Uh, um, there are potent flavors: cinnamon sticks, jalapenos, peppers, uh, clove. All those things. If you are able to um, rack off of them, then you really need to be taste testing regularly. Uh, it, it's same thing for oak. If you are using an oak spiral barrel, uh, cubes, chips, that stuff has like a a time that it suggests on there, six to eight weeks. But that's not like fact i've had um oak be strong enough in four weeks when it said six to eight if i had waited that six to eight next thing i would have know i'd have been chewing on a piece of wood so (laughs) trying to go by um sometimes even what standards i would say from like my recipes or someone else's or something isn't always true you should be taste testing regularly if if not you're going to run into issues that are just not fun. Like, like I'm sure you've experienced this with peppers. If you make something that has pepper in it, you leave the pepper in too long, you're going to have yourself, even someone has a hothead who loves it. Someone, something that's pretty hot and not everybody's a hothead. Not everybody loves peppers. So just really taste testing along the way is important for everything in secondary. I would say, yeah, Uh, I'm sure you've experienced, like you said, you've, you've started to, uh, or you have already realized that over time. Yeah, yeah, that was, that was a learning experience. And this was just recently uh, on that one that I learned that. Um, so uh, I'm really, and again, this was another one that my wife goes, you might want to be making a five-gallon batch of this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, 
So, uh, I, I see okay, so, so I got some questions now, just like a few about like some ingredients. Um, what are some common ingredients you use? I use a lot of apples and cinnamon and now blueberries. And um, I've been just kind of teetering around a ton of flavors, but I always have a circle of things that I love to use. What's in your inner circle of fruit, favorite fruits to use? Uh, oh, favorite, okay. Oh, now I changed it to favorite fruits. Okay. You know, the first I was gonna go, my favorite, favorite ingredient to use is honey. <laughs> yeah. well, I, let's, uh, I, I'll open up the circle and say ingredients in general. I say fruit, um, but that's where my brain went. But if let's say you love something else, wh what are some core ingredients for you? So for me, yeah, yeah definitely fruits. Um, apples, uh, pears. Uh, I like that combination of apples and pears. Um, mango, straight up. Um, pineapple, that gives a really nice tangy flavor in there as well. Um, I've used oranges, and it's good, but I wouldn't put it at the top of my list. Um, mm, orange, orange is tough. Yeah, um, and the combination of berries. So if I get a combination of blackberries, blueberries, uh, raspberries, uh, uh, cherries, you know, things along those lines, mixing those together. Uh, and I always, uh, you know, and I always tell people, you know, freeze it first. Take it, freeze it. So that when you take it out and you warm it up, now it's going to burst out those cell membranes, um, which was actually something that my wife told me, uh, say, you know, yeah. you want to burst the cell membranes uh, and, uh, you know, freezing it will do that. And so she gave me a biology lesson. Um, so, it, it's, so my wife is, as said, uh, she's a professor. She uh, is actually, she teaches cell, cellular and molecular biology, um, which came in really handy recently. Yeah. Uh, I thought I was going to have to pitch a meat. I thought that I had mold in it mm -hmm. and it wasn't, it was, um, it was actually a piece of, I can't get into what the ingredients are. That's going to be in a different video. Uh, it was a, it was a piece of something and, uh, I'm like, uh, Oh man, I'm going to have to pitch this here. And so, so I bring her over first. I said, honey, can you take a look at this? I think I got mold and she, Pulls out her, I mean, she's got, she pulls out her microscope, pulls out all of her equipment, takes a small sample, puts it in. No, this isn't mold. You know, this is just a piece of your stuff here. And basically called me an idiot, drank my sample, and <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, was, it. Otherwise, I would have had to completely start over again. Um, yeah. So I was really happy, and just it's really nice when you ha when you're married to somebody that's really smart and yeah no yeah. That's, that's when an idiot that's marries a smart nice. person it works out really well yeah Man, well that's a so um you know on that kind of topic when you deal with mold it's a it's a it can be a scary thing because unless you are um you have the credentials to really figure out what's happening Mm -hmm. Most people don't know what it is. We generally, brewing community, have a few things we know. One is like, uh, I don't know how to say it, pellicle, something like that. It looks like a weird, white, foamy thing. Mm -hmm. There's some um, uh, mold, mold, some things that grow that look like mold that are not mold, but it's also hard to tell. So if for anybody listening, like if you see something that looks really sketchy, First of all, you know, maybe take a picture of it, put it on any Facebook group, any Discord server that you can find that is related to mead making. And there's most commonly someone in there who has dealt with that issue, knows what it is, and can tell you what it is. Yeah. That way you're like getting the fact and not yeah. just guessing. I, I would be careful on that, uh, even still, especially, you know, posting something like that on a Facebook group. Um, so I don't know if you've seen it yet. BC just came out with a great video on yeah. it. Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, from over at Doing the Most. Hey, so, folks, if you haven't seen uh, Doing the Most video on uh, mold, you just put it out. Go watch it. It is really good. And my wife and I were sitting there watching it. Uh, and I said, here's a professor. She's got a PhD in this stuff. And she just loved the video. Um, sometimes she gets tired of me watching all these different mead videos and stuff. She loved that one there. Cracked her up. He did a great job with it. Um, and she goes, yeah, he's nailing it. He, he's got it. He understands it. Um, so, uh, you know, it, it's good having that back. But he nailed it as well when he said 
he nailed out some of these things that people were posting out there saying, oh, this is fine and you can suck it out from underneath and yeah. you know, just pull it back. I don't want to pull back that mold at the top. I just kind of oh, yeah. cringe. <laughs> gross. That, that oh. is true. That is true. It is not um, one person's Facebook opinion is not the truth always. You know, I think you really need to kind of get multiple sources and yeah. uh, my, my uh, protocol with uh, mead making and mold is if I see it, if something's happening, I generally am quick to just toss it. And I make a lot of stuff, so it's like, oh, this sucks, I lost three gallons, but I'm gonna yeah. keep going. Also, it's just, you, you feel safer. So yeah. anyone dealing with that, be safe, <laughs> don't be dumb, make sure you're, you're taking care of yourself. Um, don't, don't put something in your body that is uh, unidentified, because you'll really yeah. regret it in the future. Yeah. I will say, I don't know if you saw it, um, Jordan over on uh, Air to the Meat did a video, a short video on how to deal with mold and meat. And uh, I would say, it, viewers, if you haven't seen that one, go check out Jordan over on Air uh, to the Meat uh, and look up for how he deals with mold and meat. Yeah. Short video, brilliant. There are a lot of new resources coming out on it, which is fantastic. So anybody listening, YouTube is now becoming a good place to deal with the issues and I think that's important. So I want to switch gears a little bit and then um, I got some other questions. So of all the ingredients you've used so far, what has been the most challenging for you? Jalapenos. Yeah. And one of the, one of the reasons it's so challenging for me is because I love jalapenos so much straight up. I mean, I do a, um, over, I, Mentioned, I've got another channel as well that I started off with um, uh, Hodge the Hungry Hunter. And on one of those, I'm making um, bacon wrapped venison uh, jalapeno poppers. Mm. And um, they're incredible. But I love the jalapenos. And in general, you find that, you know, the peppers in general, the smaller you get, the hotter they are. Uh, wow. So I like, I like the smaller ones. The, uh, but because I like jalapenos so much, I like spicy stuff so much trying to incorporate that into a mead uh, has been difficult. I said that first um, dragon's breath mead that I did, uh, did not care for it. Um, so folks, if you want to see a video, if you guys want to see a mead that does not come out well, go check out dragon's breath. Uh, it's got some cool special effects in the video, but <laughs> the mead itself is not that great. Um, I didn't care for it. Uh, but again, I'm going to try, try making that again, but I'll use one jalapeno and I'll pull it out earlier see how it comes mm -hmm. out. Because as I said, that was one of the things I learned in a recent one that I'm doing right now is I pulled out the jalapeno after uh, about 10 days, after a week or 10 days, I can't remember which one, I have to go back to check. Mm -hmm. um, and so far it's, it's in secondary right now and it's been really good uh, yeah. so far. And have, you noted, have you noted because you've used peppers, any that uh, um, pepper flavor, pepper heat, I should say, grows any have you noted that at all have you noted that it maybe dissipates over time so at least the one that i did uh the dragon's breath after a year it was still just as strong uh, it hadn't dissipated any and you could still it was just in the back of the throat as all you could get out of it was pepper it was, it was almost like a black pepper taste uh in the back of the throat that's pretty much all you got you didn't get the uh, aspects of the honey uh, or the fruit that was in there as well. It was just that overpowering. It's like, this, this isn't fun. You know, not enjoying mm -hmm. this. Uh, but I think that if I try it again and change, again, that was also early in my, when I was a uh, couple, well, yeah. I've only been at this about four years. I'm still a beginner here. Uh, God, me too. I, the, I totally uh, understand. The, uh, I understand. Uh, from what I've learned now, I'm going to try it again with new learnings and see how does it come out now if I, if I do it this different way. Uh, and I think that'll be, I think that's going to turn out interesting. Inter yeah. I've, uh, um, in some instances, maybe it's been a different pepper. I've noted that, that the heat has gotten stronger over time, especially in a, a recent project I'm doing. I'm using, um, it's a sort of habanero and I put it into secondary and I put it in for like four days and taste tested along the way. It got to, got to the point where I was like, this is good. I just taste tested it mm, maybe two days ago. 
the previous one was like probably two weeks ago. And I feel like that heat has risen even more. So I've noted that with spices before cinnamon gets stronger in my opinion, over time. Um, other spices get stronger over time. It's, it is a, something you have to experience to really know. Um, I, I can cautionary tell people these things, but until you experience that pepper heat that suddenly gets stronger over X amount of days or the cinnamon stick that, Oh my gosh, you know, what the heck it's yeah. been three weeks. And now all of a sudden it's like all I can taste. Yeah. You kind of have to go through the, the trial by fire before you realize, Oh yeah, I got to probably pull it out earlier. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's a good point. Um, all right. So let's do this. Let's start, start talking a little bit about some of your channel. Uh, we've been talking about your channel and kind of some of your projects. I have some specific questions I want to know from. Sure. You. So, um, what's been like the most challenging video in general for you to shoot? I think the most difficult one, it was from a uh, technical aspect of it. Sorry, Dylan, no problem. Got it. Dog, dog got a hold of something. It's okay. <laughs> you can edit that out. <laughs> no, oh, it'll stay in. I don't even care. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Um, Keep going. You're good. The most technically difficult one it was a lot of fun to do uh was the knock knock mead uh -huh. uh, and i don't know if you saw that one there uh, but the it's the first part of the banana orange pineapple mead mm. uh, and uh the, the meat itself is really good uh but making the video uh was i did something i hadn't done before which is um uh, basically twinning myself on the screen. Ah, so there's two of me I've on the screen. I've even done that before. That's interesting. I'm having a conversation with myself on the screen, uh, telling a knock-knock joke. So, and then getting the editing down, uh, and the, ti the timing and the editing down so it looked somewhat normal. Uh, right. It, it kind of looked more like a Gilligan's Island episode uh, at the end. <laughs> It was fun to do, but I think it was it was technically difficult to do. Uh, some of the other ones, it just gets kind of hard when you're making the video. So I've got a, uh, I said married, got a dog, got two kids. Uh, one's off, usually off at college. Uh, the uh, another one, I've got a high school kid, uh, and my mother-in-law lives nearby. Is when I'm. I usually start down here. I like to do my openers down here with this kind of a background here. And then when I'm actually making it, I'm upstairs in the kitchen uh, because it's easier to sanitize everything upstairs in the kitchen than do it down here. Um, right. Where, yeah. The, you know, cause I'm, you know, it, every sanitize everything, you know, being in the sanitization. Um, so being upstairs and then when, as I'm filming it, I try to time it when people aren't home and stuff like this here. Uh, but you'll be in the middle of, uh, video doing a taping and then people will come walking through the door and they're talking and so I'm like okay I'm going to have to make another batch of this because you're like you, you've already gotten into your ingredients you started pouring stuff and mixing yeah. stuff and telling a story as you're going along so now you've already got everything mixed up and then something comes in and just interrupts the video and it's like uh, it'd be hard to edit that out I'm going to have to just make another batch and do it yeah. again, take yeah. two. And so no, I, I've gotten, I, I totally understand that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So and that's usually, you know, when my dog comes by and stuff, that's really not a big problem. Uh, he's actually kind of camera shy. He doesn't like anything being pointed at him. So, um, and that aspect is pretty good, but uh, pe people aren't as uh, quiet as, dogs are. <laughs> right. Yeah. They come in, they can't see, but they also can't see through the wall. They don't know, Hey, Hodges in there taping. Uh, yeah. And uh, so they just come in and they hold it. They're doing their normal thing uh, that they do any other time. And it's just, I just happen to be out there taping at the yeah. time. So things like that make it a little bit difficult. Uh, but, uh, and coming up, trying to keep things fresh and unique. You know, I, I don't want to be just a, okay, today we're making a uh, strawberry lemonade mead. Here take strawberry lemonade, pour it in a bucket, take honey, pour it in a bucket, add your yeast, cap it, done. Yeah. You know, 
Uh, no, yeah, I understand. It's going to be interesting. Mm -hmm. And I, I think to that point, though, interesting. Um, you know, I, I for a while I was like, I, I wanted to be interesting of things, of course, of course. But I uh, I realized that maybe it's my long term brain. But I'm like, you know, maybe five years from now, who knows if I'm still doing YouTube? If I am, <laughs> awesome. If I'm not, what I really want to look back on and be like, do I have a solid source for people? somewhat interesting. I don't necessarily need to throw some crazy twist on everything. Cause I did that for a while. I tried to come up with some twist for like every video, like to make this more interesting, instead of me using this one specific thing, I'm really, I'm just going to throw a curveball and use this. And I, I did it in a way that I was trying to like, um, wasn't necessarily always focusing on making it a better, making better content or excuse me, making a better mead, but just making better like, not outrageous content, but interesting content. So yeah. I, I think you're totally right. It's all about being interesting and, and doing these things. Uh, I work with kids all day as a teacher. Um, I have to be, uh, I have to be very interesting to keep them interested. You know, they have a attention span of literally goldfish nowadays It is <laughs> incredible how short term they can pay attention. So I understand like the struggle, but at the end of the day, we're, we're making content that is hopefully going to last time and teach people how to make this thing. And we're all creating, so to speak, a encyclopedia of, of mead making research. And so your channel's no different. You know, I'm excited to see what you have in store because um, I think you are attributing great things to our encyclopedia. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. You know, and I, I like to try and make it so that when I'm filming, my, my concept of it, is I've got some friends coming over. We're just going to hang out. We're going to make some meat together. You know? Um, you know, I want the people that are coming and sitting down, you know, going, hey, you know, even if I've never met somebody face to face, I want somebody to come in and sit down and go, hey, there's my buddy Hodge, you know. Uh, yeah. And hey, let's, hang, let's hang with Hodge tonight, you know. Things along that line. I want that comfort level, you know. And if you walked in my house, I'd joke with you the exact same way as I do on the video. That's just my nature. That's, you know. It's, it's just having, getting out there, having fun. And I, man, I love that. Th there's enough stress in this world uh, that, um, you know, if we can take some stress off of people, these people's burdens just a little bit, you know, 10 minutes at a time, it's worth it. You know, Absolutely. Everything the world's going through, it's worth it. I agree. No, I think I, I love, I love your, uh, um, desire for your videos and kind of like just your whole uh i'm trying to find a good good word for it um my, the word i have in my brain because where i'm at in life is vibe i don't know if you've ever used that word much oh, yeah. but uh, i think you, the the vibe of your channel is is uh so friendly and so what it is hanging hanging out hanging with hodge and i i'd love that um i, I want to know a couple things about the future of hanging with Hodge. What are some things or what are some brews rather that you are looking forward to making um, without spoiling, of course, too much of your, your content. Is there anything that we can like a brew that we can look forward to seeing? So there's one I'm trying to figure out how to do. And it's more of a con it's, it's a concept. I don't even have the ingredients yet. I want to make an inception mead. Oh, I want to okay. make a mead inside of a mead. You ever seen the movie Inception? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, where you got a dream inside of a dream inside of a dream. Okay. And I, I haven't figured out. It's just a concept that I have of an Inception mead, of a mead inside of a mead, uh, where you, you start tasting one thing. And kind of the way that my mind has been thinking about it is, okay, well, how would you do that? You know, what, what, would, what would it even be like? Uh to have a meat inside of another meat. And, you know, maybe it's something like you start tasting one thing and then as it lingers in the mouth, you taste something else, you know? So think about, you know, Hey, um, I, I've got a strawberry inception meat and I take that first sip and that's not strawberry. That's blueberries. Oh, hey, there's a straw. Oh, Hey, there's strawberries. The blueberry's gone. It's strawberry. Was the blueberry ever there? Uh huh. You know, something like, you know, so that's kind of a, a concept that 
I'm trying to figure out, you know, how would I do yeah. that? Um, it sounds that, like you, uh, that I'd say it would be cool. It sounds like you need to uh, make like, make a mead. Let's say it's, let it be two or three months old. Mm -hmm. Take your one gallon of mead you made and mix it into a new must batch. Let's say a three gallon batch. You use that one gallon. So you have something super potent like your blueberry, for example. Yeah. And so you use that as part of your must batch. You're going to have some alcohol content already created, but most yeast will be able to handle that. And then ferment with your new, your yeah. previously made must, or previously made mead with a new must. Yeah. See what happens. That sounds like it'd be kind of, that, that's where my brain went. Of course, you're, it's your channel. You're welcome to do it. <laughs> Whatever things you're, but that sounds super interesting. I, I love that. That, um, it sounds like a good challenge. I, I yeah, like that yeah. I'll, t I'll tell you what, 10,000 points to anybody who comments below or over on my channel on how to do it. You need like a, um, you need a website where like you can like, you don't even have to keep track of points. Just be like at 5,000 points, you can buy this prize. You can just have like a silly prize board or something like that. Yeah. And just, <laughs> so if anyone's really tracking their points, they're like, oh sweet, I got to 8,000 points. I can get that whatever <laughs> now da download a um uh, uh um make downloadable images or something hey yeah. when you get to this you can download this it's based on the honor system or something yeah. like that yeah no yeah. that's like fun. i earned the five thousand points <laughs> you know i everybody the, the point system is something that a lot of people including myself it's it is regardless if the points are real or not it's like whose lines anyway like you, you that's where i got some, it from yep. <laughs> yeah you feel some sort of uh, kinship towards, uh, and it's, it's kind of fun to, to play with that. I like that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I said, you know, come for the meat, stay for the points. <laughs> I love that. So my last little question, and then we'll, we'll kind of, um, wrap it up. But my question is, what are some ingredients that you are, um, I have, I have the question written down as, hoping to use in the future but more specifically i'm i'm wondering what are some ingredients that you are you see as like a challenge like there's always been something that you were like i have to use this this feels like like my final boss of mead making i gotta use this at some point honey <laughs> ah a very specific type of honey though which one which one uh, and i can't i can't remember the name of it i saw a documentary on it it's a psychedelic honey. Oh. And they harvest it off of the sun. It's, I think it's like over in Nepal. There's only one place in the world you can get it. Uh-huh. Um, and it has psychedelic um, uh, aspects to it when you eat it. Interesting. And, and uh, th the native people there uh, hang off of cliffs. And, and then, I mean, it's not like beekeepers who go out, you know, you get the whole bee suit and everything like this here. Uh, you get the smoke and stuff like this here. You know, you smoke canister and stuff. They go out there and they've got these um, reeds that they set on fire and then they put it out to get the smoke. And so they're holding these reeds that are smoking. They're waving that as they're hanging off of the side, at the, the, on vines off of the side of a cliff oh, to geez. get to this honey. Um, so, yeah, you're going to have, you know, several aspects of problems making meat with that. Um, one is right. getting it. Uh, two is getting it through customs. Uh, three is getting it through customs legally. Um, and the other one, obviously, is going to be the cost of it because it's, it's like one place in the world that they can get it. Um, and uh, so to be able to get that, I would love – when I saw that documentary – I can't remember what the name of it is, uh, but uh, uh, I, I'll, I'll find it and I'll talk about it on one of my future videos here. Uh, but uh, I was like, that would be cool to make mead with that honey. You know, I hear, yeah. you know, most of the honey that I use is wildflower honey. As I said, I tried to make it as simple as possible so anybody can make mead. You know, yeah. uh, make it as cost efficient as possible as well. Most of the honey that I use um i get from costco i use their wildflower wow. honey um uh, it's good it works you know i i like it uh and again as, as we we're talking about you know you brew for what you like 
um, and I make honey my way, you make money, your, honey, you, you make me your way, I make me my way, you make me your way. There yeah. we go. I'm already into my meat. Uh, but, uh, you know, there are some other honeys that I want to try. Uh, some of the ones that, uh, like orange blossom honey and some of these other ones that are out there. I've had the opportunity to get honey locally from some folks, uh, and that's come out really nice. I, I like the local honey as well. Uh, I had uh, a buddy, one of my best friends, uh, knows a guy, knows a beekeeper, and uh, he gifted him a bunch of honey. And he's like, hey, Hodge, you want to make mead with this? I'm like, yeah. So hey, I made mead with it. There you go. And I, and I sent some of the mead back to the guy that gave my buddy the honey. Say, hey, thank you. I appreciate that. Here's some mead from it. Hey, yeah. And, uh, that's a good uh, deal yeah. right there. Yeah, I thought that was a great deal. You know, especially local honey can be expensive. That's the one downside to making me is it can be a bit pricey, but it is still less expensive to make it yourself than to buy it in the store. Now, mm -hmm. does it mean that what you buy in the store isn't worth it? Uh, it is. M most of the honey, most of the mead that I bought in store, uh, local stuff, uh, has been worth it. I, I enjoy it. Uh, but it is for a um, was it, uh, three. 325, uh, 325 ounce or milliliter bottle. Yeah. Um, it's like 20 bucks. So basically yeah. it'd be 40 bucks for a regular bottle, regular size bottle. It's like, ah, eh, it's a little bit pricey. Um, but when I'm, if you make your basic meat, if you go out uh, and you get uh, honey from uh, Costco or from uh, Walmart, you know, get the Walmart brand, what have you, uh, a bottle of, uh, a gallon of filtered water uh, and uh, a packet of yeast for less than a buck. It really comes up to about two bucks a bottle. Um, yeah. And it's, it's decent, it's drinkable. And then, you know, even some of the more expensive stuff that I'm making, you know, even with the uh, mango honey, uh, the mango meat, uh, that one there still comes up to about four bucks a bottle, maybe five bucks a bottle. It's still a whole lot cheaper than what I, if I were to sell, if I were buying this in the store, I expect to pay thirty bucks a bottle for it. It's right. good, uh, yeah. You know, and you pay for quality, and it takes time. Yeah, but it's a great hobby. It, it is. is. It is a, a hobby that um, anybody who gets into. I, th I think everybody starts a mead, and then um, most people who jump into it real fast realize, well, crud! I have to wait a month or two for the next one to like like feel comfortable really drinking this one. I'm just going to start another. And the next thing you know, you're like, you're like seven deep and you're like, okay, I'm taste test in my first three now. All right, here we go. And so next thing you know, you're, you're 25 meads deep into this thing. And you're like, wow, this is, this is crazy. Or like me, I'm, I'm about, um, I think I just logged number 190 in mine. And so I'm like, I mean, I'm like full fledged psychopath, you know, serial <laughs> mead maker at this point. So um, it is a, a hobby that is so fun in such a deep dive. Does it cost money? Yes, but you are saving money in the long run with buying, like you said, other uh, a booze, really. I mean, if you're buying meat, of course, it's expensive. But if you go and buy beer, beer is expensive. If you go buy wine, wine is expensive. So every, every alcohol is expensive. Home brewing is a good way to save that money. You save money, and again, it's, it's a fun hobby. Um, you know, if you pick up almost any hobby, there's going to be a cost to it. You know, if you're building model airplanes or model ships, you're going out and buying that stuff, and you're buying the glue and the paint and stuff like this here. Um, if you're uh, into, I don't know if you can see the dartboard over here. I love darts. You know, where well, you got the equipment of buying darts, buying the dartboard, the you know everything there, and you know going out and getting into leagues and stuff. Your hobbies you end up paying money for, you know, yeah. it's another hobby and you get a great product out of it afterwards as well. Yeah, I, I'm all about it. And, um, you know, I really want to push people as much as I possibly can to go check out your channel because, Hodge, you are not only one of the nicest people I've met, but your channel is <laughs> such a, a great resource for mead making and just a community. I think everybody on earth is looking for some community and you are such a welcoming welcoming person that um i have no doubt everybody who shows up to your channel is gonna enjoy their time there so 
I would I love, it. love, love to push people your way. So what I'll do is down in the comments of this, if you're watching the video version down in this YouTube video, or if you're listening to the podcast on whatever avenue, there will be a link to Hodge's channel, Hanging with Hodge. If you uh, um, don't want to check out that link, you can just look up Hanging with Hodge on Google, YouTube. I'm sure you'll, yep. you'll find him real fast. He's got a plethora of incredible content to check out, and I highly recommend it. Um, Hodge, I have loved getting to chat with you. You are such a, a genuine, nice guy, and um, I feel like I barely just scratched the surface of, of who you are, and uh, I love it. You're such a, a great guy, and I, I, I love getting to chat with you. This has been a great time, Garrett. I really appreciate you inviting me to come on to your show here. Um, I've been watching you for a long time. You're one of the reasons I got into doing this as well. You know, seeing so it's like, oh. hey, I like this guy. I'm going to try doing this as well. Um, you know, and I've learned a lot uh, watching your channel and uh, a lot of other great channels out there. Um, yeah. So, folks, come on over. Uh, hang in with Hodge. Come hang out. Come for the meet. Stay for the fun. It'll be a blast earn some points that don't mean anything, but we're going to have a good time doing it anyways. <laughs> oh yeah. The points that's, that is the big one right there. I, I don't do any point system. I'm going to leave the point system on up to you. You can, have all the, <laughs> you can take all the point system. Cause I love that. I think that's great. So uh, like, I, like he just said, go, go hang out with Hodge, go check out the channel, make sure you're just supporting Hodge and all of his mead making and his other channel. If you'd like to subscribe to that. Um, I have no doubt you will learn something. And you'll have some fun. So Hodge, thank you so much for your time. Um, this has been a blast and I really look forward to all of the content you have coming out in the future. Um, sounds like you have some fun stuff planned and I, I um, especially the inception meet. I'm curious to see what you end up creating with the inception meet. It's going to be good. Thanks. I appreciate it. Garrett. Yeah. Cheers, hey, brother. Cheers.